Westminster Seminary and Calvin are intimately connected. The Westminster Confession of Faith, that is the basis of the name of Westminster Seminary, is really a product of Reformed people who studied the scriptures and in the tradition of John Calvin tried to proclaim the whole counsel of God in a systematic way. So as we think about Westminster as a seminary and as a confession, behind it there is the wonderful truth of the Bible and there is also the reality of a human being who sought to explain the scriptures in their fullness in a way that would impact the church, indeed through generations to come. It's hard to believe that 500 years have passed since Calvin was born, but in that half millennium, Calvin's thinking has reached literally to millions of people around the world. It's true in such strange places as Jakarta, Indonesia. There's a growing reformed movement that loves the theology of John Calvin. There are people in China, mainland China, in a communist country who are studying Calvin's thought. It's true in South America, it's true in Africa, it's true in Europe, and it's true right here in the United States. So Calvin's thought is something that transcends time and culture, not because Calvin was a genius, which he was, but because he was thoroughly committed to the fact that God's Word is true, that God's Word is relevant, that God's Word is over every human culture, and that it shapes culture, and that it calls us from time into eternity to the glory of God. Calvin 500, therefore, is something that Westminster has been very interested in. As the president of the seminary, I joined with others to uh, put together an international conference that's uh, planned at this point for July of 2009. And uh, those proceedings bring together 30 different Calvin scholars from around the world to present the ongoing legacy and validity of the Calvinist approach to Christianity. Now personally, as a scholar, I was introduced to Calvin very early on. I can remember my first class on Western civilization learning about Calvin. And as you read scholars, there are those who love Calvin, there are those who hate him. Uh, but whatever you do, you cannot look at Western civilization without seeing in some way the impact of a man who saw a whole organized way of looking at the world from a Christian perspective uh, that does not take Calvin's thought front and center as a key part of the Western civilization that we know today. The idea of ordered government, Republican government, the idea of human depravity with checks and balances, the idea of a free market system, the idea of individuals having the uh, pursuit of liberty as an individual with conscience for their own ideas. These things have, in different ways, their roots in Calvin's thought. My own study of Calvin has been focusing on his work in the Covenant. When I studied in my PhD program here at uh, Westminster back in the 1980s, I started in 1978, finished in 1985. A slow program, finally got done. My dissertation was on Calvin and the Covenant. It's been published as the Binding of God, Calvin's role in the development of covenant theology. And I discovered as I wrestled through Calvin's writings, from his sermons to his theological treatise to his great work, The Institutes, that he was a seminal thinker. He actually wrestled with the biblical data of the covenant and tried to put it into a theological structure. I can actually see his ideas written out in systematic form in later theologians that are writing in the 20th century. I can see his ideas in the Westminster Confession of Faith. Surprisingly, covenant theology was actually born in certain ways through his interaction with one of his predecessors and contemporaries, uh, Ulrich Zwingli and Heinrich Bullinger. So to the extent that Westminster sees itself as a school that follows covenant theology, they're reflecting in that regard Calvin's thought. So one of the things I guess I would want to say as I wrap up my uh, reflections on Calvin is that his model of doing theology, which is a high view of God's Word, systematically structured, focused on the unity of the Bible and the covenant, elevating Christ and under the great theme of soli deo gloria, to God alone be the glory. That's still what happens at Westminster. 500 years after Calvin's birth, just like Calvin, we are committed to studying the Bible as God's inerrant and infallible word. Finding Christ is the core of it all. Seeing the unity of the Bible from a covenant perspective. Trying to apply the scriptures to all of life, to all spheres of life, to all aspects of culture. This is what Calvin did so well in his day, and we're still trying to carry that forward. 
But as I conclude, I also want to say this. Calvin recognized he was a mere mortal. He wanted no church to be named after him. He didn't want him or his work to be venerated. And that's our view as well. Calvin was just a human being. If he had never had written the Institutes of the Christian Religion, the church would still be the church because it has the Bible. But we each have gifts to bring to the kingdom of God. And Calvin brought his gifts with strength and commitment. And that created Reformed theology in some of its most vigorous forms. And that's what God is calling you to do too. To take your unique gifts and apply them to your sphere of life, to the glory of God. Taking the Bible as the foundation, focusing on Christ and applying that gospel to all that you do. Come to Westminster as a student and we'll help you to accomplish that. If you're in ministry right now as a pastor, recommit yourself to these core values. And it's in doing these things that normal people, people that are mortal, that will die and pass away, leave a legacy that will abide for generations to come. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word abides forever. That's precisely because Calvin took God's word so seriously that 500 years later his words are still being remembered because he committed himself to that which is eternal. That's what we do at Westminster, and that's why we appreciate Calvin, because God's word never perishes, never passes away, and that's what we're all about. Come and join us.